Hello, everyone. We're going to give people some uh, time to come in and forgive me. I'm extremely nervous. It's the first stream I've done. So I hope everyone's been enjoying the author tube retreat. And let me mute my camera on the other end. There we go. Sorry about that. So let's see. Who do we have? We have Devin. Hi, Devin. Hi, JC. And Sherry. And Heather. Eva. The Blind Mage. I'm glad to see people coming. I was a little worried nobody would show up, <laughs> quite honestly. Hey, Eva. Okay. I think you guys can actually see me well. Hey, pronoun I. Uh, so yeah, as a, as a as a very very bad book said, we're relaxing a bit. Um, I might make you do ten thousand words handwriting. I might. But yeah, this is the uh, this is the intro to calligraphy, and it is actually a very condensed version. And I will be um, expanding that on my actual YouTube page. So if it's something you guys want to see, you know, I encourage you to subscribe to it. It's going to be somewhat separate from AuthorTube because it doesn't directly talk in, in reference to writing, but it is a, a very dying art that a lot of people don't understand. Um, mostly dying art because computers are faster. I mean, that that's the honest truth about it. So I wanted to show this is... This is some of the stuff you can do when you learn about calligraphy. And calligraphy is also really good for, let me see, creating web, web journals. Like that. Try to put this in. So I'm going to show you some of the basic strokes that will help you as you are as you are going day to day, learning how to uh, create very colorful journals or just writing all of your books. So first I wanted to show you some of the stuff I have. Um, forgive me, I do have a phone, so I'm kind of utilizing the phone. So I'm gonna come in and show you some of my, to make sure that I can actually do this right. But yeah, there we go. Sorry. So as you can see, I've got a collection of pens. And they all, so I'm going to show you my collection and then I'm going to show you individually what some of these are. It'll probably just be easier that way, actually. So a lot of people are very familiar with these type of pens, ballpoints. Some ballpoints are, very, are more colorful. Yeah, I did not do too good showing you that. I apologize. This is one of my favorite pens. This is actually a fountain pen that's very versatile. Um, you have you have the regular nib. And this actually comes out so that if you want to, you can use a cartridge. The ink cartridges look like this. Now, when you're getting an ink cartridge, make sure you get the correct size on these because if you don't get the correct size, you're going to have ink everywhere. I mean it. What's also really cool about this pen is you can either use it as dip ink or you can actually get a piston and put the ink in that way. And I've got a pen that will show you about pistons as well. So this is a very multi-versatile pen. The reason why I was showing you ballpoints is because most people think calligraphy is very, is very expensive, and it can be. Like this one is at least a hundred dollars and this is probably the lower end of quality. Um, you also have pens like these. I'm not sure about this price. I actually got this one from a friend, but this one has a cartridge in it. And actually I could show you probably what the cartridge will look like. Make sure I'm not throwing the ink on me though. There you go. That, that is what the cartridge looks like. And you have to be careful because these things will lead on you. I think I still have 
I still have some ink on me from last night. My favorite pen that I like to use is this guy. This guy is called an Amaroy. It is actually uh, very old. It's about 40 or 50 years old. Let me see if I can twist him off. So this is actually just one tip. And he's got a whole bunch of tips. Let me see if I can find where I put his tips. And here I thought I actually had that. <laughs> I pulled it out too. So this tip actually comes off like this. Hey, Badberry Books and Keelan. Thank you so much for organizing this. And as you can see with my hands, ink. So this guy actually has a piston. Let's see if I can get him out here for you. And what a piston does is it actually goes into the ink. Let me see if I can show you. Again, you'll just have to forgive me. I'm on a phone, so... I am, I have interesting makeshift ways of making this work. So let me play with you guys real quick. All right, let's see. Yeah, it looks like, looks like you can see. All right. So this, this is called Jade Noir. And while we're talking about ink, um, the secret word is Monte Verde. Let's see. Make sure you can see that. Monte Verde is the secret word. And with the secret words, you collect them and you get to every word you collect, you enter an, an, um, a, play, a pool to get 15, a $15 Amazon gift card. So definitely make sure you remember. I use Monte Verde because it is a big ink company and it's actually well known. When you are getting ink, always make sure you do not get waterproof ink. Ah, here it is. I can show you. This pen comes with several different tips. And each tip is um, according to the, the bold and the, um, the skinnier. And it just depends on how many, how much you want, how, how much you want your lines thick or not. Always make sure they're clean. With the ink, you want to make sure you do not get waterproof. And the reason is, is because waterproof has a shellac. And what the shellac will do is it'll actually ruin the inside of the pens and cake on. So you can't clean the pens. And once a pen is not uh, cleaned, once you can't clean it, you actually destroy the pen and you might have to throw them away. And I'm telling you, these things are expensive. Some of them go all the way. I have a friend who's got one that's $10,000. So trust me. These pens are very expensive. I don't know how much this one was because it was given to me. And sorry about the air conditioning. So what you do with a piston is you put the pen in here. And you take this. This is, this is actually an easier piston because it just lets me roll it up. Always make sure you get the globs off. And since I've got that going on, let me show you a little bit of what you can do. I will show you that too. So what this is, is this is the basic strokes sheet. Learning your basic strokes will actually help you learn how to do a lot of calligraphy. I got this one from the YouTuber Ensign Insights. She actually has free practice sheets if you want. And she even goes through some of the basic strokes. With a fountain pen, it's a lot harder to do some of these strokes versus if you use one of these, which is a brush pen. This was actually created for brush pen technique. I'm going to show you with this guy since I just pulled, put the ink in. This is an upstroke. An upstroke you want to, when you're holding a pen, most people, they hold pens like, like this. You can't hold a calligraphy pen like that. You have to actually hold them very loose and on the side. If you tighten them like this to the point where you're shaking, um, you're actually going to break the nib. And these, like, this nib, for instance, this nib is $12.
Um, they all, depending on their quality and if they're made out of gold, brass, silver, or iridium, this is iridium. I believe this one is brass. It That's how much it depends on, on how much these things cost. So if you guys want to grab a piece of paper and try this with me, I actually have learned how to do calligraphy with ballpoint pens too. So with the upstroke, it's very simple. You just go up. The upstroke should always be very thin. You can also do stuff like this. Let me get him a little. So, yes. And now I have made myself very, very inked up. But that is actually, this comes with the trade. Just know that you are going to, you're going to create a lot of ink. So the upstrokes are always nice and thin. The next one that's very important to learn is the downstroke. And when you're doing the downstroke, you have to kind of angle your pen because this is not going to do anything. It's going to create another upstroke. But a downstroke is like that. It's actually very thick. And you normally have to have your pen a certain way to, to make it correct. With the overturn stroke, it's a little different because you're you're starting to combine the up and down strokes. So with the overturn, you're going to start up like this, and then you're going to turn midway and then go down. This is actually the start of most of your um, fancy little stroke letters. The U is just like the overturn, or the underturn is just like the overturn, just in reverse. So you'll do this, and you'll go up. This is the style. This is just showing you that you can actually do very different ways of doing it. Um, the compound, making sure you can still see where I'm at. Yes. The compound is actually, again, it is the combination of the upstroke and the overturn underturns, where you, you go up. You're going to come down and you're going to go right back up. And you can see how it creates this thickness. And like I can do the end for you right here. That's a combination of the compound curve. Um, with the oval, you actually go this way. So you're going to go down, but you're going to kind of curve. And yes, when it comes to calligraphy, you actually learn how to pick up your pen. You can't just, you know, keep going without picking it up at times because the pen has to um, come up. If not, you're going to ruin your tip. And again, you don't want to ruin the tip. You want to be nice and light. It's very flowy. So the next one is called the ascending loop, making sure you can still see. With the ascending loop, you actually start at the top or the middle. You go up and you come down. It's like doing a P except for instead of going down first, you go up. And that creates the nice illusion up here about how thin things are. And technically all the loop is is this. I'm doing little style variations. And the final one is called the descending loop. And just like the downstroke, it starts, you go down, and then you come back up. And once you get used to this, you can actually start doing very odd, different ways of doing things. So I thought I'd at least show you how that looks because I had taken the ink and put this up and with that pen. Make sure we're still doing good, 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 good. All right. So I had showed you my opening page. The I, ha I can has cookies now. This is actually something I did uh, last night, and I did it very quickly. And um, I, what I love is I love the combination of the line work and the, the um, actual uh, letters. And don't be afraid to use a pen or a pencil to create things because some sometimes that's just easier especially when you're starting off is to learn how to create pencil some of the uh 
handwriting I wanted to show you is this is this is called old English style. Let me see if I can give you a better show of it, maybe doing it that way. Um, this is actually what I did my wedding invitations in. And let me see, I actually have my wedding invitations somewhere around here. I have them, but I cannot find them at this moment. But this is what I used for my wedding invitations because I was getting married at the Renaissance Fair. And these are, this one was actually created in a very different way. What I did. Uh, I'm actually going to show you right on the page. So I'm going to show you how to do it on the page. And I'm actually going to dip my ink in. This has no ink in it. So I'm going to dip it. What I did to actually create these letters is like for A, I did this. I went down like this. This is what happens when you don't necessarily have a pen that's going to give you the thickness you want. Then you go up like this. Create your tail. And you can tell how even now there's a variation. So right now it doesn't look like much of the lettering. So what I do is then I go over here. This is another way you can create it. It takes a little longer because you are actually sitting there coloring your letters in. But if you don't have a very thick nib and you have just these, which are the very thin, fine nibs, it's an illusion that you can do. You can actually, you can actually create it as if you just did a huge calligraphy thing. This takes longer, though. I will tell you. I think it took me an hour, hour and a half or so to do this. But as you can tell, that that is a way you can also create it. I got this design from Mar uh, Marcos Design Studios. But the old calligraphy is a, the old English calligraphy is something that's been around for a very long time. The next one, and one that I love to use a lot, is called the Baroque style. And the Baroque style is literally, you know, lots of flourishes. And it's it's all about um, trying to make it look very, like a lot of people use this, as you can tell, for cursive. And again, this one is done really well when you're just very loose and flowy. And if you can't use a pen like this, because this thing's heavy, this thing is probably at least a pound or two. And especially if you're not used to, um, to doing handwriting, it's really good to just kind of let loose. And yeah, you do want to let loose. And most calligraphy is done by the side. You'll see some pens that have no nib, but a little little extender here and the nib is on the side. That helps you learn how to do the side brush strokes without having to learn how to grip these pens. Um, so yes, I have that Baroque style. And that's the under, that's the basic strokes. Let me see what time we're at. Okay. So with this one, I actually created my own. I decided if you guys wanted to practice, because some people like to practice, I decided to create my own alphabet out of my handwriting. This is actually how I write when I'm not doing basic calligraphy. I I tend to I tend to um, change my handwriting a lot. And that, for me, that's fun. I, I do it. I like to uh, figure out how handwriting is, is done. And one day I want to join what's called IMPEF. IMPEF is the International Penmanship Club. There are only 12 masters in the entire world, and they actually have to hand design their calligraphy certificate. But members can join. You just have to be picked out of a crowd in order to actually become a master. And it is a very, it's a dying art. So if you want, I can show you how I did my handwriting here. And if you want to follow along with me, you can. Make sure that you've got everything in the page. There we go. So what I did with A is 
there are several ways to start out. I tend to start out like this. Like that. And let me see. Tilt this. It's always good to tilt and angle your paper because you never know when you're going to need it, especially with calligraphy pens. They are very finicky. They have to be tilted in certain ways. And as you can see, by, by changing the way your hand is in a very loose manner, you can see the thickness and how it changes when you're actually, when you're actually doing it. Literally, it's all about not really controlling your pen. Um, when you do calligraphy, you don't just do this. You actually control the entire hand. The hand has to move because just doing this is going to hurt the pen. So... And then we can but as you can see you can actually see some of the basic strokes that I've been using now this was a downstroke that th that I made look like an upstroke because you can't actually manipulate the strokes as you're going Sorry, I keep checking my time because I know that I, I have only a few minutes left. But I am planning on continuing these courses as a big series. So let me put you guys back up here. Sorry about that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed some of the introduction. I am planning on actually doing um, even an um, even larger series so that I can show you, take you from learning basic strokes all the way to learning even the um, the Baroque script and the old English script. Just for, you know, in case you're very interested, um, I actually do all of my books in handwritten format. Let me see. Let's see if I can find one for you. <laughs> I have so many books around here. So, so this is one of my journals. And as you can tell, I do everything in hand. I handwrite all of my calligraphy. Because for me, when I'm handwriting, I actually feel more immersed in the world. And it makes me feel like I'm actually a part of it. And it lets me slow my brain down. I also illustrate. Ah, there we go. Again, all of this makes me feel like I'm actually in the world when I'm writing. Um, and then once I'm, once I'm editing, that's when I actually start putting the computer to use. Because the computer is the last thing I really care for. Um, I also wanted to let you know that once you're done clean, once you're done with your pens, you want to clean it again, as I could show you, the secret word is Monteverde right there. This is called a fountain pen flush. There's also ones that are, that are, um, Higgins pen cleaner. Um, these type of cleaners, what you do is you take your pen and you first, you run them through water hot, cold, it doesn't matter. No soap. Do not use soap. You're going to, like, I'll actually take this guy apart all the way with this one. I'm not going to do it now because I just put ink in it. But you actually, when you're running it underwater, you run it like this, and then you use the piston to pull up the water and take it down. Once you're done with a few rinses, then you actually put the Monte Verde in. And what it does is you, you pull it up with the piston like that, or you submerge the tip. You let it sit there for a while. If you're going to submerge it, if you're going to um, use the piston, then you need to keep uh, going back and forth. 
uh, because this thing, it has to be cleaned all the way. Soap will ruin it. Um, waterproof ink, like the India ink and stuff, will ruin it because it has, it's got shellac, like I said. So definitely no soap. Make sure you have this. And um, let's see. Does anyone have any questions? I know um, in later calligraphy uh, workshops, I'll show you how to do things in ballpoint because you can also do this in ballpoint. I'm just checking to see if anyone's got. Hmm. Oh, for the sore hands, um, Eva, I actually have um, carpal tunnel in this one. And what I do is I've, I've learned how to do shiatsu massages on the hands so that I can keep them. I can keep them well when they're getting when they're getting hurt. But definitely make sure to take breaks. And there's nothing wrong with taking a break, especially when it comes to calligraphy. The other good thing about this is by learning calligraphy, you can start doing stuff like Santa cards, as I think I saw somebody somebody talk about Santa cards. Yeah, I actually got paid to do Santa letters for people. Let's see. Eva has a question. When is your series starting on your channel? I'm amped. Um, I was going to have it in a month from now, but I've decided that I need to actually bring it up closer. So I might try to do the first part uh, next week. I was going to have it a little more delayed because I have, as you can see, I've had to work a, a really bad set. I don't have an overhead camera yet, but I think I found a, a cheap system, if you will, that I could actually start this um, sooner rather than later. <laughs> so hopefully that answers that question. Let's see another question. Oh, secret word one more time. Let's see if I can show you. Monte Verde. You don't have to put USA. Just Let's see. Sherry's got a question. Where would you recommend on buying these things online? Oh boy, where where did I buy? Um, so you could go to the site themselves. Monte Verde does have a site. They they sell you pens as well as ink. Um, this guy is actually a ballpoint. Um, this one's just a ballpoint. Uh, yeah, I would recommend the going to the sites themselves. Pilot has pens, although they're extremely expensive, so I wouldn't recommend them too much. I'm, I've been asked to find the website that I bought this guy at again, and I need to find it. I bought it at a convention, so it might take a while. This one is $100, though. Um, there we go. Uh, I normally bought my stuff before the... Before the pandemic, I actually went to an art store that was right near me. Um, so, yeah, my recommendation on online sales is probably going to be very limited. Eva says Etsy might have some good options. They, they might. Um, you could also just uh, Google it. <laughs> like, I love to support my local shops, so I bought a lot of my stuff locally. And... Sometimes they have sales, but now now things have changed. Obviously, this one I actually these colors. This is a gold and red ink, and that was for my Santa stuff. And I bought them at Barnes and Nobles. Barnes and Nobles has some good um, ink sets. And this is for this is for start start off. Um, if you start getting really really invested into this, and you want the the really expensive pens, I would say Pilot Vivaldi. Um, trying to remember all of them there are some very expensive pens that range up into the thousands and thousands of dollars <laughs> um you could go on uh what is it called staples has 20 dollar pens just know that quality the nibs you get um that sometimes getting the cheap pen also means you're not going to get good quality so definitely make sure that if they allow you to practice the pens, which I don't think they do online, 
but if they did practice them, make sure you know what size nib you want. This one, like I was lucky with this one. I got a friend who gave this to me. Let's see, this is Omneroid. You can check and see if Omneroid's still doing pens. I think they're out of, I think they're actually out of style now, or at least out of business. business. You live in a small town that don't have one, hoping to move. Um, I Like I said, I would definitely look at like uh, the sites of Monte Verde, Pilot. Um, Amazon might have some. Uh, you can get like Fabricaster, Fabricastel, which is not, uh, uh, which is actually, let's see if I can show you. Well, this one's not. Let me get the other one. There we go. Sorry. Fabricastel, which is uh, a brush pen. But yeah, Etsy also could work. Yeah, yeah, even bo uh, bog box craft stores. Yeah, you, you know, um, going to Michael's or um, what's the other one? I think Hobby Lobby if they're still in town, but I know my, we have Michael's over here. And Michael's has a lot of um, beginner pens. Um, for anyone who's beginning, I definitely recommend getting the cheap pens. Because if you don't know how to grip these buggers and then you break them, they're expensive. <laughs> and they, it gets really sad when you break them. I've actually split one of the nibs in half. And not only does it make the pen not work, it cuts your page. That's why you need to know the, the correct strokes. Because these are metal and they will cut your page, no problem. So it is 9.01 and... I think they have the other, the self-published panel going on. So um, I think I'm going to end it here. But if you have any questions, um, you know, just feel free to ask. If you have any any calligraphy art you want to share that you do, you know, um, put it on Instagram. You could tag me or something. I mean, I, I would love, to, I love seeing people's uh, art going on. I, I'm big into the art. And if you're interested in learning more about calligraphy in the series, just, you know, hit the hit the subscribe button, um, the notification bell. Uh, I have a Patreon. I'll be putting more uh, of my calligraphy stuff in the Patreon as I go. And, you know, that's basically everything. And I hope you're enjoying the author to retreat. I know I am. Bye. Thank you.